customize your process template. So in this section, we're going to learn exploring the process template types and customizing a process template. Explore the current process template. So out of the box, you get a number of different process templates as previously demonstrated. However, each one of these process templates consists of different configurations of work items or work item process, WIP is something you will be talking about today, and also the background workflow logic. So making changes to it can really help customize them for your projects, but also for your organization and how your organization works. Customizing your process. It's worth mentioning that there's some distinct differences between the Team Foundation server on-premise and the Visual Studio Team services. Firstly, when you connect to the Process Template Manager, you would be able to upload, download and delete process templates from TFS on-premise, whereas Visual Studio Team services at the moment only allows you to download. Now this is going to change based on they're going to implement some REST capabilities that will actually allow you to highly customize the Visual Studio Team services. But it's also worth mentioning, as you can see from the right hand side, there's a huge amount of configuration in this process guidelines. You need to make sure that you follow them and you also understand your environment because things like SharePoint, as we've covered off previously, have been removed and different versions have different levels of customization and things like the mapping files to Microsoft Project. So what is it? We've gone through the standard PCW before the project creation wizard. And we've shown you how you can just pick a standard template and that sets you up with a number of artifacts by default. Now, what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at taking those template files down, uh, which are a number of XML files, and then actually changing the process model. So that could be how the workflow logic, it could be customizing it or renaming components or removing certain components. So it works more customized for you and your organization. So let's start with the on-premise Team Foundation 2018. Before, everything you needed to do, you'd have to shell out and either use PowerShell or Windows scripting host, i.e. the command line interface, to actually upload and download any changes that you made to the schema. This was a little bit better in the sense as if you took it a step further, you could use Visual Studio, uh, the IDE, so the integrated development environment, as long as your TFS version matched your Visual Studio version. So now that this has been taken away, you can now upload the process template directly into your TFS instance, which will save time and also make sure you don't make any mistakes when you're modifying the XML and uploading it. So let's touch on that process template manager. The way that I've always done this, and it's the way that I would recommend that you follow the instructions in the bottom left-hand corner, is you can back up all your current work item types. So what you do is you connect in and you export them either one by one or in a, you can create a, a whole stack of scripts that will actually automatically back up and export them into a file location. So that way you can then modify them and then look at uploading them. So as we kind of said before, now that you're in using Visual Studio, IDE, you can actually go into the process template manager and you can upload, download, and also delete. So part of this is you can back up and prepare yourself to make any changes and then upload and commit them to your Team Foundation server instance. So let's look at how that's different with the Visual Studio Team services. First of all, it's a hosted XML process model. It allows you to download it in a similar way to TFS, but when it comes to uploading it, it's much more difficult, which is why they're looking to enhancing the REST API to allow you to custom uh, create, update, and delete, and make changes directly to the process template through the API. They've also, as a way to be able to support a journey to Azure, you can migrate your Team Foundation server to Visual Studio Team Services. This is something that's only recently been introduced, and I'd recommend looking at the tools because it will help you understand whether or not this is gonna be something you can do in the future if you've got a managed on-premise. The second thing which we'll be showing and demonstrating is actually this ability for inheritance process models. So part of that is you can take a 
bog standard process template and then you can make some customizations to it and it becomes a inherited process model. So this is really powerful because you can also commit this to any other of the projects that are using that standard template. And as we know from previous ones, you can actually change your process template at any time in Visual Studio Team Services. This is an incredibly powerful capability if you want to move between Agile and say Scrum. So how do you customize the process template when it comes to Visual Studio Team Services? Well, first of all, as I mentioned, you can go in and you can export and that export capability will bring down all the XML files that you need. Now, of course, the idea behind this is we're going to be looking at customizing and making changes to that. And then the next step will be to upload directly into Visual Studio Team Services and import that new process template. So that's incredibly powerful because it allows you to modify an existing one and then refresh it and put it back into Visual Studio. Okay, so I'm in Visual Studio Team Services and I want to go and have a view what the current process template is. What I do is I just simply navigate to the process and then I can see all the process templates currently available. You can see their system processes so that the Agile, Scrum and CMMI and they allow me to do a number of things. Either create a new project against this, create an inherited process that then allows me to do customizations, or I could change which template my current project uses. We can also see which fields are used in this particular configuration and if they've made had any changes made to them. Now if I go back to processes and I just go to Agile, what I can see is all the work item types or work item processes, WIP for short, and I can select one of these and navigate through to how it's currently being configured. So what it looks like on the screen. I can also understand the states and as part of the states, it understands how the flow goes so that I can actually understand it goes between new, active, resolved, and then closed. Now let's do that again, but this time I'm going to do it in Team Foundation Server. So of course I can go straight through to the processor section again. I can select any of these and do the same actions, but what you'll notice is that I can upload a process template. Whereas unfortunately, you don't have that option on here. I'm going to quickly cover off the Team Foundation Server to Visual Studio Team Services, as this standard process is something which you'll be using if you're using the TFS or Visual Studio Team Services approach. So it's worth looking and putting some due diligence around the process that you need to do. So first of all, it's going to be very important that you upgrade to the latest version of Team Foundation Server. So there's a number of upgrade guides there that take you all the way up the release from 2005 all the way to the latest 2018. And secondly, you're going to need to download the TFS Migrator. This will allow you to migrate a current collection and push that into the cloud. It also validate that this will be something that can actually happen. So it's worth checking that your current template is going to be customizable and suitable for cloud 